Welcome to Defenders, Dr. William Lane Craig's weekly class at Johnson Ferry Baptist Church in Atlanta. For more information concerning the subjects on which Dr. Craig speaks, visit our website at reasonablefaith.org. You'll find articles, compelling debates, audio video downloads, an interactive forum, and many more resources. That's reasonablefaith.org. This week, uh, another editorial appeared in the Wall Street Journal on the origin of the universe. This one was by Lawrence Krauss, uh, who's a very prominent physicist, called Our Spontaneous Universe. And he basically seconds what Stephen Hawking uh, has to say in his new book, that the universe arose spontaneously from nothing. Krauss says this, For over 2,000 years, the question, why is there something rather than nothing, has captured theologians and philosophers. But, he says, data coming in from our revolutionary new tools in physics promise to turn much of what is now metaphysics into physics. In other words, what used to be a metaphysical or theological question has now become a physical or scientific question, and it is science which will provide the answer to this age-old metaphysical question, why is there something rather than nothing? And the solution that uh, Krauss proposes is that our universe arose spontaneously from nothing. It is just a quantum fluctuation out of nothingness, and that is the reason why the universe exists. Uh, He points out that the um, positive and negative energy in the universe balance each other out so that the net amount of energy in the universe is just zero. And he says, if our universe arose spontaneously from nothing at all, one might predict that its total energy should be zero. So he thinks if the universe just arose spontaneously from nothing, then this is exactly what you should expect that would have... a a, a net balance of zero energy. Now, you might think, well, but how can something come from nothing? Uh, How can something come into being uh, apart from any cause? Well, he says in the article, as a scientist, I've never quite understood the conviction at the basis of essentially all the world's religions that creation requires a creator. He doesn't understand it. Why do you think that a creation requires a creator? Every day, he says, beautiful and miraculous objects suddenly appear from snowflakes on a cold winter morning to rainbows after a late afternoon summer shower. Yet no one but the most ardent fundamentalist would suggest that every such object is painstakingly and purposefully created by divine intelligence. Well, as I reflected on this article, I thought once again we see the lack of philosophical sophistication on the part of a physicist who, while a brilliant scientist in his area of specialization, doesn't have an inkling of the metaphysical and philosophical questions that he's trying to address here. If by nothing Mr. Krauss means literally non-being, then physics is impotent to explain how being can originate from non-being. Physics explains the transition from one physical state to another physical state according to certain laws of nature operating on the uh, initial state's conditions. But you see, in an absolute origination of being from non-being, there is no transition. It's not as though there is something that goes from non-being into being. Because in an absolute origination, there is just the beginning, the origin of something. There is no enduring subject that once had the property of non-existence and then has the property of existence. In absolute origination, there is nothing that endures from non-being to being. So physics is by its very nature impotent to explain how you could have an absolute origination. Moreover, if he's actually talking about non-being, then again, his statement here is just unintelligible, that if our universe arose spontaneously from nothing at all, 
one might predict that its total energy should be zero. Now, if being can originate from non-being spontaneously, if, if things can just pop into existence uh, from nothing without a cause, then there's no way to predict at all what should happen. Any kind of universe with any level of energy would be able to pop into being uncaused from nothing. So that the idea that there would be predictability assumes, again, that nothingness is somehow governed by certain laws that has certain constraints or properties. But if you take non-being philosophically seriously, it has no properties, no constraints, no powers, and therefore it's just impossible to predict what would arise uncaused out of nothing if such a thing were metaphysically possible. This makes it, I think, very evident that what Mr. Krauss has done here is he has equivocated on the term nothingness. He has, he has changed the meaning of the word nothingness. When philosophers and theologians ask the question, why is there something rather than nothing? By nothing, they meant non-being. What Mr. Krauss means by nothing is a state described by quantum physics. It's, it's a quantum physical state. And that is not nothing in the philosophical sense of the word. The vacuum state described in quantum physics is a roiling sea of energy uh, go governed by physical laws and having a rich physical structure. It is far from being nothing in the um, philosophical sense. So what he's done here is simply change the subject. Instead of asking, why is there something rather than non-being, he's asked, why is there something rather than just the quantum state? And then he says the universe originated out of the quantum state. But he doesn't answer the question, well, why is there a quantum state rather than nothing? What's the origin of that? Why does it exist rather than nothing? So he hasn't really addressed at all the original question. He's just changed the subject. It would be like a philosophy student I heard about once who uh, on his uh, philosophy exam was posed the question, what is time? What is time? And he answered the question by saying, time is a weekly news magazine. <laughs> well, that's true. That is true, but only if you change the definition of the word, you see. You've changed the subject you've equivocated, and that's exactly what Krauss has done. Uh, he leaves unexplained the origin of the quantum vacuum. Uh, he never addresses the original question, which is why is there something rather than literally nothing at all, non-being. And uh, now he says that science is going to solve metaphysical problems, which shows he simply doesn't understand the metaphysical question in the first place. So as I say, this is really uh, all very elementary, but it's it's discouraging to see such sophisticated physicists falling into these traps of logical fallacies like equivocation without even realizing that they're doing so. For more resources from Dr. William Lane Craig, visit our website at reasonablefaith.org. You'll find articles, debates, audio video downloads, and much more. That's reasonablefaith.org. Copyright for this material is owned by Dr. William Lane Craig.